Hey there, it's Jeff, the founder and head coach of Mind Access Life Coaching and Australia Apparel, and I'll be headlining on the online prosperity show today. We're going to be talking about all things life coaching, business, entrepreneurship, and we're also going to be talking about the masculine mindset. So stay tuned for a great discussion. Can't wait to share it with you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another inspiring episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we dwell into the secrets of success and uncover the pathways to a meaningful life. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today we have a remarkable guest with us. Jeff, how are you doing, my man? Very good, my friend. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Now, for those that are wondering who Jeff is, Jeff is the founder of Mead Access Life Coaching, and he's here to share with us his expertise in helping unfulfilled millennials create a meaningful life. Now, Jeff is also a visionary behind the Asteris Apparel brand, a gym wear company that is designed to serve ambitious men. And with his background in human biological science, neuroscience, and biotechnology, Jeff brings a unique blend of academic knowledge and practical experience to his coaching practice. It is such an honor to have you on the show today and welcome once again. Now, Jeff, tell me something. You've leveraged the power of video across most of your social media platforms, especially LinkedIn, where video is not commonly used. How has this strategy actually helped you grow your brand um, you know, and online footprint? It's helped me a lot. You see, on LinkedIn, it's a non-video native platform, meaning a lot of people are still using text and such. But if you look at the landscape of social media in terms of Instagram, even Facebook now and TikTok, YouTube has been doing it since you know the dawn of video itself on the internet. It's how you connect with people, right? It's the same reason why we're doing this recording on video. It's how we connect to each other's faces and we get to understand and relate to one another. The problem with LinkedIn is that when you type, it's great to read, but our attention spans have decreased as a result of all these other platforms. I mean, they've shown that TikTok has literally significantly reduced the human attention span to, I think, somewhere between about five to seven seconds, about the attention span of a goldfish. So through using video, I've been able to bump up my impressions. So on LinkedIn, uh, if you're listening and you're familiar with how LinkedIn works, there's a lot of impressions, which shows how many people that your content has been delivered to. This has gone up for most of my videos and it only really started to go up once I started to invest in video and get in the confidence to speak in front of a wider social media audience. Absolutely. Now, obviously, for one to have, you know, video as a backbone to their content strategy, they got to have a story to tell. Tell us a little bit about how you actually got started and what your journey has been like that has prompted you to actually, um, you know, get on this uh, pathway. Yeah, so for myself, I was a drug addict and alcoholic for a long time. So I was in that realm for about eight years. Now, during this period in time, it didn't affect my career pursuit. So I was still able to go to university. I have three degrees. I was also able to follow a career pathway. So during the daytime, my life was functional. When I wasn't around other people or I was in my own personal time with my own friends, my life was very dysfunctional. So in this event, what happened, there came a, a make or break point. I remember it was in 2020 when I was going to get promoted in my workplace. And I realized that I was in a position that was quite serious. I was about 24 years old at the time. It was project management. And I realized like, wow, okay, like I can't keep messing around with my life. So I got sober and I was, I really struggled to get sober. So if in that six month period of transition, well, I'll get off drugs um, and I started to wean off drinking and smoking. I didn't do it all at once, did it in stages. At the end of 2020, I created the Instagram page called Your Daily Purpose. Because my mind had always been philosophical, right? I'd always struggled with the nature of the world, which is one of the reasons why I went down that pathway of drugs. I didn't know another way out. And the people around me, uh, let's just say we weren't the most inspirational people. So when I went down this pathway, I created this Instagram page and I started to create personal development content and I shared it out with the world. 
this page grew very quickly. In a couple of months, it reached about over 3,000 people when I was actively posting every day. And people used to come and message me. And they used to say, hey, you know, this piece of content really helped me out. Or we'd spark a discussion in the DMs. And I never experienced anything like this before, you know. Like, I mean, I'd talk to my friends about certain things or talk to relatives, but I would never have these kind of conversations where people would be asking me for advice. They'd be taking my opinion and using it. So if anyone wants to check it out, this Instagram page is called Your Daily Purpose. It still exists. The following is a bit down now because I don't use it actively, but at its peak, it was doing quite well. And throughout this period in time, I started to change and I started to decide that I wanted to do something with my life that was positive. I mean, my career was good. I was working in clinical research, project management, but I decided that it wasn't for me and it was really bringing me down and depressing me. I wanted to do something to help others. So I got certified in life coaching. And during this period of time, it took me around about six months to do so. And when I finished my coaching certification, I thought, you know what? I'm so sick of the way my life is right now. I'm going to make a drastic change. So I quit my job and moved to Melbourne three weeks later. I just left everything and I just moved across the country. And when I did move across the country, it was one of the worst periods of my life because I went, the day I arrived in Melbourne, it was a lockdown. Like we literally locked down when we got off the plane. It was, I remember it was the 16th of July or the 17th of July. It was the fourth lockdown in Melbourne. I was locked down the entire time I was in Melbourne. I left, came back to Perth. But since then, I've been going from strength to strength. I've realized a lot about myself. As you know, Prosper, the entrepreneurial journey is quite a difficult one. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about yourself through helping others. So in the last two years, and I've been doing this for over two years now, I've coached over 100 clients. I've created on webinars, multiple podcasts. You can check there's over 30 podcasts. I post actively on social media. As you mentioned earlier, I created my own gym wear brand, Australia's Apparel. And I've just keep going. I, in fact, I just came back from six months of uh, travel around Asia and I was working the entire time as well, just through this online method. And the only reason I came up with it was because when I moved to Melbourne, I planned to coach in person. But because we were in lockdown, I was like, well, I have to, you know, have to get money somehow. I have to get paid. So I took everything online. And that's how all of it was born from being put in that situation. Absolutely. And good on you for, you know, really dusting yourself up and cleaning yourself up because being addicted to drugs and everything is just something that a lot of people can't get out of. And you seem to have also helped other people in the process to achieve that. Do you feel like, um, you know, this might be the calling that you have to actually free other people from addiction? You know, I have thought about that a lot. And some of the clients that come to me, they are addicts and it's holding them back in life and we work through getting them out of it. Um, so, yeah, I would say it is, I wouldn't say it's my entire calling, but I would say it is a component of it. Fantastic. Now, while you are, you were also trying to redeem yourself, um, you know, that's the birth of this uh, social media platform, this Instagram uh, following that you now have. You then also went on and launched uh, Mind Access Life Coaching. Now, do you, I mean, how did you then realize that, you know, the, the, the value that you had achieved for yourself, you could actually start providing it to others? And um, would this be what has actually led you to now pursue coaching full time? Yeah, it was from that Instagram of people reaching out, like people around the world that I'd never even known in my life. I mean, even before that, people had always come to me for advice. For some reason, that's always been the case. Even when I had my own issues, I was never very vocal about it. So people would come to me in my workplace and things. I was a leader of the team, so people would come to me for advice. But when I started to do it online with my writing and with my content, it made me realize that I could provide value to this world. I mean, I'd always wanted to, but I had no belief at that point in time in my life. I mean, I was 24 years old pretty much terrified. And when people started to do that, I realized, wow, like I can actually provide some value to this world. I don't just have to sit here and hide and do what everyone else does and collect a paycheck. I can do something that involves risk because maybe people will want what I'm offering to the world. And it gave me that push that, okay, maybe if I open up something and I tried it out, this will work. I mean, this wasn't my first business. I've had a couple of businesses before, like, for example, I was an academic tutor for a long time and I owned my own carpentry company as well when I was younger. So I knew business already, but coaching as a business is very different from other businesses because you're not out there selling a service for time or whatever it is. You're selling an outcome. 
and people are coming to you because they trust you and they know that you can provide what it is they seek. So coaching is more personal than most other businesses out there and how they operate. Absolutely. I like that comparison that you said you're not selling time, you're selling an outcome, which is the future person that that person wants to sort of achieve. And you also mentioned that in your extensive, um, you know, uh, experience in coaching, you've coached over 100 people uh, in the past two and a half years. Now, can you maybe share some success stories or maybe memorable uh, moments from your coaching practices when you actually uh, changed people's lives? Yeah, definitely. In fact, my most, my favorite moment is a client I'm working with uh, right now. So we've been working together for about, uh, this is the eight month, right? And when he came to me, in December, actually, no, this will be the seven month. When he came to me in December, his girlfriend had just left him for somebody else that he worked with, right? So they all worked together and his girlfriend left him, broke him, took everything. And he was terribly depressed and anxious. He was addicted to drugs. He was addicted to all kinds of things. I won't go further than the drugs, but his life was spiraling out of control. When he first came, he couldn't even talk. He was just silent. He couldn't really share much. But the reason he came to me is because his brother-in-law referred him because I also coached his brother-in-law. Uh, so that was a kind of like a family link. Now, over the past few months, he has changed incredibly by helping him realize how powerful he really is, helping him gain confidence in what he wants because he has a goal to be a writer. He has a goal to be a fitness instructor. But right now he's stuck working in a prison. He hates it. So every day is a complete nightmare for this man. But over the last few months, He's moved himself completely out of that mindset. We've worked together. He's gone from being depressed and anxious to creating clear goal strategy for his future, which he's now actioning. And we're winding up the program slowly because he's achieved the outcome he seeks. He's been able to quit smoking weed. He's been able to quit going out. He's been able to quit some of the other addictions, which I won't talk about. And he's been able to turn them into positive things like writing online every day, training every day spending time with family when before he was too ashamed to see them. He's completely revolutionized his life. And I'm very proud of him. And uh, that would be one of my my favorite clients that I've worked with for sure. Absolutely, man. You're changing lives because if people can let go of those um, addictions and um, ways of life, they can start having a happier existence. And kudos to you for, um, you know, being the linchpin that is actually making that happen. Now, Speaking of fitness, you did say that your client wants to be a fitness instructor. You also founded or oh, you own a fitness apparel brand, uh, Gmoe. Now, how do you maybe intertwine your passion for fitness and ambition to actually start serving um, ambitious men through maybe your Gmoe company? To me, fitness is very important. I make sure to train every single day. Uh, even if I'm injured or something, I will find a way to train because when I was coming out of my addiction period, the only thing, especially when I was in Melbourne, the only thing that kept me going was training, being able to go to the gym, doing push-ups or running or whatever it is. And I think especially for men, it's very important to train. We can't be sitting around all day on the couch. We can't be sitting around doing nothing. Like this is the worst possible thing for a man. I mean, if you look back in history, what did our male ancestors do? We went hunting. And today you have men that sit on the couch and watch Netflix. This is unacceptable. So for myself, when I put this gym web brand out for ambitious men, it's for people that see the world in a similar light. We want to improve ourselves. We want to become fit. We want to protect people around us. We want to be strong. And that's what the brand represents. Absolutely. Talking about seeing the world. And um, that's, you know, such a, a different view. You know, when people are sitting on the couch and watching Netflix, they just think that's what's around them. And uh, but you have just come back from a uh, solo trip in uh, Japan where um, you actually faced a few difficulties in you learning about the Japanese customs and um, behavior during your visit. Now, could you maybe share some of these challenges that you faced and how you navigated them? So Japan is the most interesting place that I've ever been to in the world. I absolutely love it. Like, don't get me wrong, but there were a lot of challenges to adapt First of all, nothing in Japan is English. Like there's there's no English anywhere. So you have to really learn some of the language or use Google Translate a lot, which I did initially until I started to adapt to the language. But uh, another thing as well is the little rules they have. Like for myself, I have to train all the time. Like I want to train every day if possible, or at least go for like a five kilometer walk. In Japan, gyms are so difficult to join. For tourists, 
either you go to a indoor place like a, a sports center where you have to bring a separate pair of shoes because you're not allowed to wear outside shoes so you have to like bring a separate pair of shoes if they don't have any for rent they tell you to leave so i remember there was a couple of times i would walk like five ten kilometers because i'm i'm like they're like i could take the train but i was like i might as well just get some cardio in before i get there right so i go there and then they're like no nah, you can't come in because you don't have an outside pair of shoes but they i looked it online they don't say anything it's just an accepted part of the custom so i would walk around some days and i remember the biggest deal with this was in the goya I walk around i spent about 15 kilometers walking around to different gyms before i finally want find one that would accept me and then they charge you something like 30 australian dollars for a session <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's all part of the game i mean like uh, but the challenge was definitely adapting like being able to talk to the people when they serve you like they have no english skills whatsoever so you have to kind of like info or like read their body language and luckily as a coach i'm good at reading body language so i'm kind of like okay that's kind of what they mean like that they're trying to mean that so a big adaptation curve for sure i still loved it though absolutely watashi wa ni honji no toma dashi ga imasu arigato hi <laughs> my japanese skills are still covered up there i'm on the exactly. duel ago Don't worry even even I don't even know what I just said there but uh <laughs> when you 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 traveled solo and um obviously that's a very enriching experience you know you left everything that you've ever known um you know you just going out there to a place where nobody speaks english i can't speak for that because when i traveled to australia at least when i showed up i asked them where the bathroom was and they understood me so i can imagine if you're in japan there and all the customs are totally different and respect and the whole ikigai concept um you know really makes you um approach life in a whole different manner now how did this adventure contribute to your own personal growth and maybe expanding your own horizons a lot and that's one of the reasons why i advocate for solo travel for anybody who wants to do this is because not even japan but the other countries i went to thailand vietnam malaysia indonesia when you travel alone you bring new experiences onto yourself see when you bring the familiar with you such as with friends or with families it's, it's a lovely time don't get me wrong but you're going to be experiencing much of the same when you decide to go out on your own you first of all people gravitate towards you so like whenever i go out for maybe a meal or i might go out to like a shisha bar or something like that or i might go on a tour i would make friends with different people i have many contacts on my phone from people that i met throughout these travels and the important thing about this is when you talk to people because people are more comfortable approaching one person rather than five you know what i mean so when people come and talk to you you learn about their life their stories you learn about little things other things right and you just share details and you learn more and secondly on top of just meeting people you become more confident very rarely do we spend time by ourselves in the modern world right i mean we always have our phone next to us or whatever i mean i did too but being geographically isolated so far from home whenever i got ill and i got quite ill a few times in vietnam and thailand um i had to deal with it on my own i got had to go to hospital on my own i had to be in on my own when i was suffering and ill and still work you know i just kept these struggles to myself but you learn over time how powerful you actually are is that as a human being if you have a fully functioning body and mind you can do anything you want even if you're struggling you will find a way through and that's what solo traveling has taught me and now when i have come back honestly it's like a whole different life prospect it feels like and just do anything you know what i mean like it doesn't feel like there's any limitations apart from what we put in our mind i can imagine and validate to that and really attest to it because um i don't know if if you would understand and maybe concur with me in the places or areas that you would have traveled some of these cultures have what's called a rite of passage or some sort of initiation where you know kids are now told hey here you are you're an adult now now given what you just explained to me how um you know the everyday man is just couch potato and watching netflix they haven't been told or been called upon to embark on this journey of adulthood so they just acting like they did when they were 5 when they were 11 or when they were 12 now would you think that these solo trips that you have taken by yourself has been somewhat of an initiation process for you that has just really uh, configured the way you approach the world now yeah that's a really great point prosper and I entirely agree with you i do think that's the case 
it's a it's an initiation run. I mean, like uh, tribes used to have this, right? Uh, where whenever you're a man reaches a certain age, was usually 16, he'd be cast out to go hunt an animal. And if he didn't come back with the animal, he would not be accepted as a man. And I, I think I, I I definitely agree with you. It did change a lot for me. Absolutely. Now, here's an opportunity for you to uh, give this uh, initiation to all these other ambitious people out there that might not realize that the reason why they're not aligned with their vision, their goals and their mission um, is maybe because nobody has given them that opportunity. You have coaching services and you've got webinars and, um, you know, you've written ebooks and everything else. Could you maybe inform our listeners um, how they can benefit from them and how they can actually maybe use this as their own call to action, um, you know, so that they can embark on a journey that's fulfilling for them too? So if you would like to find out more about my work, I recommend checking out my ebook. It's called The Visionary. You can find it on my website, uh, which I'll, I which I'll, I'll give to Prosper. And you can also find it at its own link as well called The Visionary ebook. What this will do for you is it will help you find a vision for yourself. It's not going to give you every solution, but I've written it in a way that for the next six months, you will be able to clarify what you want based on the seven areas of life. And you'll be able to write down statements. So at least you have an idea of where you're headed. Now, if you want to compound upon this, you can also join my newsletter where every fortnight I give out a strong piece. So it's about a five to six minute read, but it's not just generic advice. It will actually walk you through step by step the problem, the solution, and your next action steps you can take. It's literally an outcome-based newsletter. You can also check out my social media profiles where I post three times per week. And last of all, uh, stay tuned to my social media in terms of Instagram and TikTok. I post a lot there. And also my YouTube is coming soon where I'll be diving deep. So I want to start doing like 30, 40 minute videos uh, where I deconstruct concepts. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Fantastic. I also can't wait to tune in and listen to some of your wisdom there. Now, Jeff, you would understand, you know, there's somebody, especially of that couch potato variety who's probably watching this. And they have rolled their eyes so far back. They can actually see the breakfast that they had this morning. <laughs> um, and they're just saying, ah, I can't listen to these guys. Well, they want to travel. I don't have the money. They have done everything that they want to do. Um, you know, I never had drugs, so I'm okay. You know, as a life coach and NLP practitioner, what uh, specific sort of techniques or methodologies do you um, advise you know, maybe people, especially millennials, to start creating a um, meaningful life for themselves. Right. So for that first category of person that you described, someone who would be acting cynically to our discussion where we're on a similar line here, I wouldn't coach them anyways, and neither would many other coaches. Because if you come into coaching with cynicism and you doubt and you're already having a laugh at the beginning, then why are you there in the first place? You might as well spend your money at McDonald's. But if you want to actually change your life and you find that you're stuck and you can't see a better future and there's no purpose or clarity, that's where a coach like myself can help because I can help you discover your vision, what it is you want from your life. Second, discover why you haven't achieved it already. If you want something and you haven't achieved it, there is a block because realistically, a pathway to what you want can be defined with action steps. If you haven't achieved it, there's something in your mind that is missing. Fear is limiting beliefs, etc. Finally, once we get clear on what that is and the vision is clear, we turn it into a strategy. So the strategy that I give my clients and we work together, we build out a five-year strategy that we break down into daily action steps. And this is very different because you're not just looking at a vision board. You're not just looking at a picture. You're looking at things that you put into your calendar every day and actually moves the needle forward and you track it in terms of metrics. And this is how you make your goals of reality because you can write down all the goals that you want but if you're not tracking it or making time for it nothing will change and this is how my clients achieve the outcomes they desire fantastic that's such a realistic way of you know reverse engineering the future and bringing mm. it closer in bite-sized steps that are easy to follow because if you really look at the grand scheme of things then you'll be thinking wow i'm not going to be able to do that but if one step involves you just journaling or meditating or eating healthy you know at least you can tackle those um you know uh, futuristic steps towards uh, what it is that you're looking for now speaking of the future you know looking at you jeff you you've been rock bottom you've done the journey and obviously now you're helping others 
be do and have you know that happy existence what what's next what can people expect from uh jeff and you know in, in the near future so they can be excited about joining you on this crusade of yours so the journey has not done prosper the journey has just begun you know like when we look at the journey where i'm at like what i'm doing right now is a part of the journey but for myself I see I see things a little bit differently. Like uh, you may we may calculate life in terms of like money or assets or what we gain. I calculate life in terms of experiences. That's my ultimate outcome. Like well, everyone's different, mind you. Not everyone has to be like this. Some people value security, safety. I value risk and experience. I love it. So for myself, this is a component now in terms of what next. I have something very exciting that is coming up next year that I'll be sharing out and you will see it as well, Prosper. But I don't want to reveal it just yet because it's going to be an absolute game changer, not just in the business, but in what I'm doing and what in what I share. Uh, it's going to be something very exciting. I'm very excited for it. Absolutely. Now we can't wait to join you in this whole um episode right i really appreciate you for sharing with us your incredible jenny and your valuable insights today jeff thank you for having me my friend it's been amazing great stuff because your expertise in life coaching combined with your academic background has undoubtedly made a significant impact in the lives of the many millennials that are seeking a meaningful existence that you are coaching out there and i really appreciate your dedication to helping others um you know realize their full potential because if you're not doing anything for others or making other people's lives better then you're definitely wasting your time now to our listeners make sure you check out jeff's ebook coaching services and webinars as they offer an opportunity for you to embark on a transformative journey towards a more fulfilling life i encourage you to stay tuned for our next episode where we'll delve into the importance of following your purpose. This has been Prosper. Thanks to my guest, Jeff, and I bid you farewell right now. Bye for now. <music>